In this lecture, we will look at Cunningham Lin algorithm for partitioning. <coughs> Cunningham Lin algorithm is perhaps the most popular algorithm for two way partitioning. It is an iterative improvement algorithm. <coughs> you see, if you have an initial partition AB, the problem is to get a new partition A star comma B star such that the number of nets cut across the partition is minimum. See this can be looked at as a optimization problem like this that we have an initial partition A and B and the problem now is to find a, a subset X of A and a subset Y of B which when exchanged across the partition they give new partition A star and B star and the cut set is minimized. So this can be represented graphically in this manner that in order to obtain an optimal partition from the initial partition one has to swap a subset X belonging to A and with the subset Y belonging to B such that the swapped subsets are of the same size and X and Y are in this manner is A intersection B star and A star intersection B. So that is the problem at hand. We have to find this X and Y such that when they are swapped the cut set is minimized. So before we go into the algorithm we have to define some terms. Supposing we have a partition like this the node A is connected to three nodes in the other partition. So the contribution of node A to the cut set is called the external cost of A. The external cost of a node A is nothing but the summation of the connection between A and all the nodes or all the vertices in the B partition. So similarly we can define what is called as the internal cost of a node A is defined as the summation of all the connections between node A and all the vertices belonging to the partition A. So this is partition A and this is partition B in this case. So <coughs> we define the notion of in external cost and internal cost for each node. You see moving a node from the partition A to the partition B would increase the cost of the cut set by its internal cost and decrease it by its external cost. That is logical, right? Because external cost of A is the number of nets moving from A to the other partition. So if A is moved to this partition then whatever was the previous cut set the cut set gets reduced by the external cost and gets increased by the external cost because whatever was the internal cost now become the external cost. Internal cost of A and A is moved across the partition. So whatever is the internal cost gets added to the cut set. So we can say the cut set would increase by the internal cost and would decrease by the external cost. So we can say that the benefit or the profit of moving a node A from partition A to B we can say it is external cost minus internal cost. That means what we are saying is if DA is positive then there is a benefit in moving otherwise there is no benefit in the sense if DA has to be positive then the external cost has, will be greater than the internal cost. right? If external cost is greater than the internal cost then DA is positive or we can say that there is a benefit in moving A from the partition A to B. Again it is illustrated so in this simple partition so we have if you take the node A the internal cost is 2 I is equal to 2 I A and if you take node B the internal cost is 3 IB is 3. 
similarly you take node A, external cost is 3, EA is 3 and for node B the external cost is just 1 and so we can say that DA is EA minus IA so DA is 3 minus 1, 3 minus 2 so we can say DA is 1 okay but if you take DB okay it is EB minus IB so it's 1 minus 3 so it becomes minus 2 that means we are saying that DB is negative that means there is no benefit to the cut set because my optimization goal is reduction in cut set so by moving B across the partition I am not going to get any reduction in cut set in fact it is going to increase the cut set by 2 that is the meaning so DA we define for a node as the benefit of moving a node from the present partition to the other partition and DA we define it as EA minus IA so if DA is positive it just means that the external cost is greater than the internal cost that means moving it across the partition is going to actually benefit the cut set or we can say that it's actually going to reduce the cut set and you can actually even see it visualize it that if A is moved across from here to the other partition you can see that the cut set now is 3 and when it moves here the cut set will actually become I'm just talking about only moving a node from A to uh, B, from the partition A to B. However, in the original KL algorithm, we don't just move a node across the partition. To maintain a balanced partition, we always exchange nodes across the partition. That means every time we move a node from partition A to B, we also move a node from partition B to A. This is important because just because one move reduces the cut set if you keep moving such nodes across the partition then after some four or five moves the partitions will become unbalanced. One partition is smaller and the other partition to which you have moved the nodes becomes larger and that is against the original design of partitioning because if you remember originally we wanted to create almost equal sized partitions such that the cut set is minimized but to reduce the cut set if you keep just moving one node from a few nodes from one partition to another without exchanging nodes or without getting nodes in return from the other partition it is going to result in an unbalanced partition which is which is not what we want we want to at the end of the day we want balanced partitions but still money minimize the cut set so we always believe in exchanging nodes across the partition <coughs> Now this is the first lemma proposed by Cunningham and Lin that if two elements A belonging to partition A and B belonging to partition B are interchanged the reduction in the cut set is given by DA plus DB minus 2 CAB. The CAB just means that there is an edge between A and B. If there is an edge CAB is 1. If there is no edge CAB is 0. Just to say that there is a connection there is an edge. So here we are assuming that all the edges are of the same cost. In a real case if you have some critical net and you don't want it to be across the partition then you might assign a higher weight to that edge to discourage it from being uh, uh, across the partition as a cut set. Supposing we have these two partitions <coughs> and uh, we swap A and B across the partition. That is, I move the node A to the other partition and I move node B to this partition and all other nodes remaining the same. What happens to the cut set? Let us try to understand that. So we have this initial partition. If we move or if we swap nodes A and B across the partition, what happens? <coughs> see, this is what happens. As you can see here, in this diagram, I have swapped A and B across the partition. So B has come here and A has come here. The location of the, all the nodes, all the other nodes, other than A and B remaining the same. And you can see what has happened 
you can see that B has an edge, B has three internal edges to its nodes and all those have become external. You can see from B to E there is an edge, B to J, B to F, so B to J and B to F, right? And um, similarly A, A had an internal edge to K and M and that has become external now because A is moved to the other partition, A to K and A to M. And uh, A had three external edges, A to C, A to D and A to B. So you have A to C, A to D and A to B. So you can see that actually by exchanging A and B across the partition, the cut set has become worse. It has become six now. So it, which is against the goal or the objective of partitioning because in partitioning I want to minimize the cut set, I want to minimize the interconnections between the two partitions. <coughs> so why I did this was to explain or prove this lemma that is if two elements A belonging to A and B belonging to partition B or interchange the reduction in cost or the gain in swapping A and B is given by DA plus DB minus 2CAB. Now that is what has happened here. So I have the partitions A and B and I have swapped nodes small a and small b across the partition. So we can say that the cut set has increased by 3 which is something which I don't want or in other words I can say that gain in swapping A and B is actually minus 3 because originally the cut set was 3 and it has worsened the cut set by another 3 so the cut set has become 6 now. Now that is what this formula tried to do in the same manner it tried to calculate the same thing that is the gain in swapping two nodes A and B across the partition is the benefit of moving A from its original partition to the other partition plus the benefit of moving B from its original partition to the other partition minus two times CAB. You see why this is happening, why are we doing this is because you see there is already an edge between A and B. So if there is an edge between A and B even after have, you have swapped there is still an edge between A and B. But what is DA? DA is external cost of A minus internal cost of A, right? So similarly DB is external cost of B minus internal cost. So we know that if we interchange A and B across the partition, the gain in such an interchange is nothing but the benefit of moving A from this to here, so that is DA plus the benefit of moving B from here to here minus if there is an edge between A and B that is still going to be the same. So I am going to subtract minus 2 CAB because even after exchanging the edge still contributes to the cut set. But while in the original DA definition the external cost of A is from the A whatever goes to all the nodes in the other partition. It doesn't matter whether it was to B or to C or to D. Everything was contributing to the external cost. So in DA is you know DA is external cost of A minus internal cost of A. Similarly DB is external cost of B minus internal cost of B. But out of those external costs one is to the node which is being swapped. So after swapping also this is going to remain the same so I am going to subtract it from the gain. So we have DA being 1 we have db being minus 2. So the gain in swapping nodes A and B across the partition is DA plus DB minus 2 times CAB. CAB is one if there is an edge between A and B. So we have minus 3. So this is what the formula tried to do which we have visualized uh, and arrived at the same thing by actually moving nodes A and B across the partition. <coughs> this is important. Now having done this what we have realized is that if we move nodes A and B across the partition, it is going to affect all other nodes which were connected to those nodes which were swapped. Isn't it so? So for example, 
you take this node k you know what was the external cost of k it didn't have any edge from uh, contributing to its external cost in the sense there is no edge from k going outside the partition but because a moved outside there is an edge from k that is going out so moving or swapping nodes across the partition affects the cost of all other nodes which were connected to those nodes which were swapped right so then we arrive at the second lemma which cunningham and lived proposed that if two elements a belonging to partition a and b belonging to partition b are interchanged then the d values of node which is connected to those swap nodes also changes and it changes in this manner that for any node x in partition a which is connected to node a and which is also connected to node b the the new d value is dx dash is the old dx plus 2 cx a minus 2 cx b for all x belonging to the original partition minus that node which was swapped let me explain that further let me make it clear <clears throat> see what we are saying here is that we have this partition a and b and we have this node which was connected to node a and also to node b now you are exchanging a and b so b has moved in to this partition a that means we can say that the internal cost of x increases by cxb you know cxb if there is an edge between x and b cxb is 1 so what we are saying is because b was in the other partition and has come here the internal cost of x increases by cxb and a has in turn moved to the other partition so we can say the internal cost decreases by cxc so if cx if there is an edge between x and a cxc is 1 is that fine so what happens to the new internal cost of x after the swap so what happens is the new internal cost of x ix dash is its old internal cost minus cxc plus cxb i hope that is clear we will do the same thing for the external cost also right so we have x which you know x may be connected not only to this b node x may be connected to other nodes in this partition okay so what is the external cost of x it is the connection from x to all the other nodes which is across the partition so let us say that it had an external cost of ex now having done this swap what happens to the external cost of x that is what we are trying to find out so if a and b are swapped across the partition like this in this manner so the external cost is is will decrease by cxb because cxb was previously the external cost but now cxb has become the internal cost so the external cost is going to decrease by cxb and it is going to increase by cxa so it is going to decrease by cxb and it is going to increase by cxa that's what happens to the external cost so this is how nodes which are attached to those nodes which were swapped their gain values get affected so we can say <coughs> that <coughs> for any node x belonging to a minus that swap node we define the updated d value dx dash that is the benefit of moving x from here to this other partition is no more dx it has changed to dx dash but dx dash is ex dash minus ix dash so we have ex dash is ex minus ix you have cxa minus of minus cxa it becomes 2 cxa minus 2 cxp is that fine i also want you to know that supposing there is this node x is not is neither connected to node a nor b then 
swapping A and B is not going to affect the benefit of X in any manner. That is logical again, right? If X is not neither connected to A nor connected to B. So that means CXA is 0 and CXB is 0. So CXA and CXB is 0, DX dash is same as DX. Only if this node X is connected to A or B or both, then its benefit is going to change in this manner. <coughs> and we can repeat the similar exercise for a node Y in this partition B. If there is a node Y in partition B which is connected to node B and also to node A, then if node A and B are interchanged across the partition, then dy dash is going to be dy plus 2cyb minus 2cya. <coughs> so this is the overview of the KL algorithm. <coughs> what we are going to do is, given an initial partition with say uh, a, a partition is required in a circuit having two n nodes, so n nodes in partition A and n nodes in partition B, we're going to compute what is called as GAB for all possible swaps across partition A and B. And we select that pair which has the maximum gain, G1. Is that fine? I'll illustrate with an example. So we start with an initial partition and then we find out the gain for all possible swaps across the initial partition and then we choose the pair which gives the maximum gain let's call it G1 no, and then we actually swap them so having swapped them the D values of all the other nodes change so then we have to update those D values then we repeat the same process again we choose a second pair what is the second pair which has the maximum gain let us say that there is a node, uh, is a pair of nodes A2 comma B2 having a gain G2 that is the maximum gain possible and then we do that. So like that we choose pairs A3, B3, A, B, A, A and G N with gains G3, G I and G N and <coughs> the gain of making the swap of the first K pairs which maximizes sigma G A that is the uh, thing which we need. So we have these part, these gains G1 of the first swap, gain G2 of the second swap, gain, gain G3 of the third swap and so on. We find out that K which maximizes sigma G A because you see at every swap the gain G1 is going to vary. For example the first swap the gain G1 may be 2, second swap it may be 6, third swap it may be minus 2 right so we want to find out that k for which sigma g i i equal to 1 to k is maximum and we find out those swaps and we make those interchanges permanent so that is a single pass of the kl algorithm so let us see an example <coughs> we have taken this example from this book, Wheel as a Physical Design from Graph Partitioning to Time Enclosure by Andrew B. Kang and all. So we have <coughs> a graph with two n nodes. We assume that all the nodes have the same weight and also the, all the edges have the same weight. And the initial partition is given and the goal is to find a an improved partition so that the cut set is minimized. So we see that the initial cut cost or the cut set is uh, 9. See we start with finding the benefit dv for each node v. Right? We have defined already the benefit of moving a node across the partition is external cost minus internal cost. So you take this node 1, it's a external cost of 1 that is 2 minus the internal cost, 2 minus 1 that is 1. 
So that is the benefit of moving this node from this partition to the other partition. So like that you have to calculate the benefit for each nodes D1 to D8. And we have calculated them in this fashion. But now we have to find out the gain for all possible swaps across the partition. So we take this first node 5 for example in partition B and then what is the benefit of swapping this node with all the other nodes in the first partition. So G15, G25, G35 and G45. So that is what we have to calculate. So I have written it here. So when you take that second node across, second node in partition B, what is the benefit of swapping this node with each of these nodes in the first partition? G16, G26, G36 and G46. So like that we have to calculate and we have already defined these things. The, the gain in swapping two nodes across the partition is D1 plus D5 minus 2 C15 where C15 is 1 if there is an edge between 1 and 5 else it is 0. So we have to calculate them for all possible swaps. So for a partition having 2n nodes you are going to have n square possibilities. And what I have got here is all of them tabulated and as you can see here that G35 has a gain of 3 and G46 has a gain of 3. So these are the two maximum gains possible. Out of all the swaps possible, swapping nodes 3 and 5 leads to a gain of 3 and swapping nodes 4 and 6 leads to a gain of 3 which is maximum. So here we have a tie according to the original KL algorithm we have to choose that swap which has the maximum gain but here we have the same gain for G35 and G46 so let's choose 35 we can choose any one of them <clears throat> so we're going to swap 3 and 5 across the partition and the gain in doing so is G35 that is 3 so what happens when we swap them <clears throat> you see what I have shown here is the effect of swapping 3 and 5 this is for you to visualize you know for a really large netlist it is not possible to visualize but I have taken the small example so that you can visualize but in reality the computer is not going to visualize anything it is going to deal with these numbers which is going to deal with D1 to D8 these benefits associated with each nodes and is going to deal with the gains associated with swapping them but this is this part is for you to just to visualize and this is what the computer is going to do so we're going to swap 3 and 5 across the partition <clears throat> now once you swap 3 and 5 you fix 3 and 5 because we are not going to swap them anymore because already we have swapped 3 and 5 if you're going to swap them again it is there is no meaning in it so we're going to fix them and so here we have written what is called as not fixed so initially everything was not fixed now we have swapped 3 and 5 so that is that that move is fixed so what is not fixed is remaining other than 3 and 5 and as I said moving or exchanging nodes 3 and 5 across the partition is going to affect the benefit of all the nodes attached to 3 and 5 and it is going to affect them in this manner as we have already seen that if there is a node X which was connected to the nodes A and B which were swapped across the partition then DX dash will be the new value of DX it is going to affect it in this manner so we have to update it so let's take for example this node 1 and what was swapped across the partition what is A for us now in this case at this instance A is actually 3 right and B is 5 because 3 belonging to partition A was swapped with 5 belonging to partition B right that's what we have 3 is swapped so 3 is no more in partition A and 5 is no more in partition B so D1 dash is the old D1 plus 2 C 
one three minus two c one five. Is it clear? Because I'm calculating dx dash, so dx dash. So I'm cal calculating d one dash is the old d one plus two c one three. Is there an edge between one and three? No. Minus two c one five. Is there an edge between one and five? Yes. So it is the old dx d one minus two. So it is one minus two. So it becomes minus one. Okay. So similarly, you calculate d two dash and d four dash. Now listen carefully. When you come to d six dash, d six is a node in the other partition, partition B. So dy dash, you have to use this formula. dy dash is is the old dy plus two cyb minus two cya. So for example, d six dash. What is B now? B is the node which was moved from the partition B, which is node five in this case. So d six dash is d six plus two c six five. Minus two c six three, right? So d six dash is old d six two plus two c six five. Six and five, there is an edge, right? Minus two six three, six and three, there is an edge. So it is going to be d six dash is equal to old d six plus two and minus two. Which is just dy itself. So d6 dash is just two itself, right? That is understandable, because what happens is you see here, this node six was attached to both three and five, right? So what happens is three and five were swapped across the partition, and this node is a very good example because it was attached to both three and five. So it is its benefit is not going to change because of three and five being swapped across the partition. Hence, d six dash remains to be two. So I have noted this here, the updated d values. D six dash remains to be two. <coughs> and you see these d values were the initial d values. Then after the three five swap, I have shown the d values, updated d values in a different color here. Now, having obtained this, we again do the same process. Now, nodes three and five, you remember they were the first nodes to be swapped, and they are fixed. You don't touch them. Now, except three and five, whatever was in the first partition is one, two, and four, and what is in the second partition B is six, seven, and eight. So I have to calculate swapping one with six, one with seven, one with eight. Then two with six, two with seven, two with eight. G two six, G two seven, G two eight. Then three, I don't touch it; it's already swapped. Four with six, four with seven, four with eight. G four six, G four seven, G four eight. Is that fine? Now, when you have to calculate G one six, you have to be careful that you have to take this d value. G one six is D one plus D six minus two C one six. It is the present D one. So you have to take this. I hope you. It's clear. I hope you'll not make a mistake. So G one six is present D one. Although I have not written it as dash. It you know this is the present D value I have to consider now. That's why I have shown it in a different color. So it is minus one plus two minus two times if there is an edge between one and six. So it is minus one plus two minus two times c one six is the edge, so it becomes minus two. So it is minus one plus two minus two, so it is minus one. <coughs> right. <coughs> so similarly, you have to calculate for all possible swaps. And if you calculate, this is what you would get. Now, if you observe this, there is a swap g four six, which leads to a maximum gain of five. That's very good. So we don't have a tie here, so we move with, we proceed with swapping four and six across the partition. So four and six are also swapped. So 
what is not fixed is only 1, 2 in the partition A and 7 and 8 in the partition B. So here the cut set is also shown. So initially the cut set was 9, cut set becomes 6 and the cut set has become 1 now. Now we still continue the same thing. There is no change in the process. We have to exhaust all possible swaps and we have to swap n nodes across the partition till we come back to the original partition itself. You see what happens is if this is the original partition you know I have swapped, I have started with swapping one pair of nodes across the partition so I get this then the second pair then the third pair and if I swap the fourth pair I am going to come back to the original partition. A single pass of the KL algorithm requires you to do all this then only you can conclude at the answer. So let's go ahead. We do the same thing. We calculate, we update the D values. So D1 double dash I have shown for all the nodes which were connected to the nodes which were swapped across the partition. So we have got only two nodes left D1 and D2 and D2, D7 and D8 in the second partition. Again I have to calculate G17 and G18. So I have not shown it here but it's the same process so you can repeat it. So G17 you calculate G18 and similarly G27 and G28. If you calculate them we'll find that <coughs> all of them all of them G17, G18, G27 and G28 result in a gain of minus 6. Now that is that agrees with what we have because we have a gain of minus 6 but still the KL algorithm, the original KL algorithm or the single pass of a KL algorithm requires you to swap, finish swapping all n nodes across the partition of um, you know two n nodes so that you come back to the original partition. So I just choose uh, 1 and 7 so I swap 1 and 7 across the partition you can see that the cut set actually again increases by 7. So the same thing continues and finally I have got I am left with only nodes 2 and 8 across the partition and I do that also. I swap 2 and 8 across the partition and as you can see here you have come back to the initial partition only that whatever was in the left the partition A has moved here right it has become blue and whatever is 5, 6, 7, 8 has gone. So that is logical right if you have 2 n nodes and you swap n nodes across the partition you come back to your original partition and you can see you can verify that the cut set is also the same and here what I have shown here is the swap for at each stage. So first I swapped nodes 3 and 5 across the partition and when I swap that, that is the first swap, the gain of the first swap I am calling it G1 that is 3 and the gain of the second swap that is swapping nodes 4 and 6 is 5. The gain of the third swap that is swapping nodes 1 and 7 is minus 6. You can see that when the gain is negative when you do that swap it actually increases the cut set by minus 6 or in the other words that the cut set has become worse by 6 and so it has become 7 and similarly from here the cut set has become more worse by 2 so it has become 9. Anyway so the gain of the fourth swap that is swapping nodes 2 and 8 is minus 2. Now what the KL algorithm says is that we have to swap we have to stop at that point at which the cumulative gain GK is sigma G1 or sigma GI you know that which maximizes sigma GI we have to stop there so in this case for K is equal to 2 we stop because we see the gain of the first stage is 3 the gain of the second swap is 3 plus 5 the gain after 3 swaps is 3 plus 5 minus 6 so that becomes 2 so and gain after 4 swaps is 3 plus 5 minus 6 minus 2 that becomes 0 so we have we see that after the second swap we have the maximum gain so we stop there 
so this is what is called as a single pass of the KL algorithm. A single pass is nothing but given uh, initial netlist with two n nodes, we move exchange n nodes across the partition till we get the initial partition itself and each stage you find out the move or the swap which leads to maximum gain and you swap it and then finally you find that swap after which for which the gain is maximum and you make those moves permanent and you get this as the optimized partition. Now what we have to understand is <coughs> that this is a very simple example. In a practical case you may not have a, a cut set like this with a cut set of 1. So here the cut set is 1 so it is very clear that this is the best partition possible. So the KL algorithm is actually an iterative improvement algorithm. That is the partition obtained after the ith pass becomes the initial partition for the i plus 1th pass and the part iterations are stopped when no further improvement is possible. You know what I'm trying to say is this. In this in this case it so happens that it is very clear you know the cuts are reducing redu uh, from 9 to 6 and 1 and then it is increasing. When you have a really large netlist so the cut set may be as an example I'm saying maybe say 55 and then reduces to 52 then increases to 60 and then reduces to 49 right so we don't know whether even after a single pass of the KL algorithm we don't know whether we have arrived at a global minimum so supposing as I said we start with 55 it becomes 52 then increases to 60 and then becomes 48 and then becomes again 55 so then at the end of the single pass of the KL algorithm we stop with that swap which is uh, <coughs> which gives the most reduction in the cut set and now that partition becomes the initial partition for the next pass of the KL algorithm that is what we have tried to say here it's